Ahead of UFC 239 live from Las Vegas on Saturday, July 6th, we have UFC President Dana White with us here today. Thanks for joining us ahead of the big event, Dana. Thanks for having me. Why should people tune in for UFC 239 on July 6th? Because it's one of the most stacked cards of the year. And we have two of the greatest of all time, John Jones facing Tiago Santos and Amanda Nunes versus Holly Holm. And I could keep going on about the card and how many fights, great fights are on the card. But two goats, two of the greatest. Greatest female fighter ever. And uh, John Jones, the greatest fighter ever. Great. And why does Tiago Santos have a chance to do what no one else has truly done? Beat John Jones straight up. Anytime two men get in there and start throwing punches, kicks, elbows. Tiago Santos is a big durable guy with knockout power on both hands, feet, and he's hungry. He, he wants that belt. The question is, you know, how long can John Jones hold on to, to this reign? I mean, he's gone through murderer's row at, at, at light heavyweight and, and destroyed everybody. How long can he continue? How long can he stay undefeated? Got it. And give us a dark horse fight that has potential to be the most exciting matchup of the night at UFC 239. Oh, my God. There's so many. I mean, the uh, Masvidal-Ben Askren fight is a fight that a lot of people are excited about. Diego Sanchez, Diego Sanchez is a maniac. Going up against Michael Chiesa, that's a great fight. There's so many great fights on this card. I mean, I could, I could keep going. And as we know, last year UFC partnered up with ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. So give us your view on streaming and what kind of made that deal so monumental. We are completely aligned in our philosophies, our, our beliefs, and our, our view of the future, I would say. Streaming is the future. And not only are we in business with ESPN on ESPN+, Plus, but we also have our own streaming service, UFC Fight Pass. And, you know, so I'm working on all the new things and all the new technology and all the new programming that we're going to deliver on that end uh, on UFC Fight Pass and all the things that we're going to deliver to ESPN Plus. Now, when you're when you're a guy like me and you come from where I came from and building a, a sports organization, you, you know your dream is to someday be with ESPN, and you know how good they are and what they can do, but you don't really know. You don't know till you're in it with these guys. They have we've been in business with these guys for six months. And it's already completely taken our business to another level. That's awesome. We know a lot of people are going to be streaming the fights on the Roku devices next weekend. Yep. The evolution of the women's division has been exciting to watch. Was that something the fans wanted to see more of? And where do you kind of see that division going in the future? Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you think about it, the fans really dictate what's big and what's not. These women are so good and so technical, and, and, and their fights are so exciting. It, 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 uh, it's become massive for us. How do you see UFC and boxing coexisting, and do you think that one success hurts the other? No. Both can coexist. I think that there's a lot of things that need to be done to fix what's broken with boxing. And I think over the last 20 years, I've proved that my model works. and I'm going to get into boxing, and I'm going to see what I can do. So you said that John Jones is the greatest UFC fighter of all time, but who do you think was the most beloved by the fans ever? Oh, God. That's, it, it's, tough to, it's tough to say. You know, Chuck Liddell in his era w was beloved. Ronda Rousey beloved. McGregor, obviously, if you look at his popularity. But, you know, it, it depends on the era or whatever. To say that there was one most beloved guy or girl. I think that's hard to do. Yeah, it's tough. And what's on the roadmap for Conor McGregor, or is there any potential plans with the UFC in the near future? Yeah, you know, the kid loves to fight. He's obviously in a very good position. He's incredibly rich. And, uh, you know, his whiskey's doing really well right now. So I think, you know, he wants to rematch with Habib so bad. I think he's going to sit back. The other thing plays out in September. You know, Tony Ferguson is in line for a title shot, too. So we'll see how this whole thing plays out.
And give us one UFC fighter that might be a little bit under the radar for some fans that puts on just a great and exciting show every time out. I would say if you, if this is going to sound crazy because she's actually fighting for a world title, but up until about a week ago, Weili Zhang, her name is Weili Zhang, Chinese fighter. She's ranked uh, number five or six in the world right now, and she's going to fight Jessica Andrade for her title. I think that she's actually going to end up being a big breakout star. Give us your favorite combat fighting boxing movie of all time. Got to go with Rocky. Who's the actor who looked like the most realistic fighter that you've seen in a movie on screen? Daniel Day-Lewis. Best UFC fighter turned actor or actress? I got to tell you the truth. He, he was kind of a was kind of a one and done, and it didn't do as well as it was expected. But I thought Rampage Jackson was awesome in uh, the A team. Current UFC fighter who would make the best actor or actress? I think, you know, he's doing movies right now, and, and, and I think he's so good and natural on TV. I think that he could actually be good and, and do, as Michael Bisping. If there was a movie made about your life, who would play you? <laughs> I don't know. Probably Michael Chiklis. And last one. When you're not running the UFC, what are you currently watching on TV? When I do watch, I'm usually watching Family Guy. All right, Dana, that was awesome. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to join us. Pleasure, buddy. Have a great day.